Good morning, folks. We are still in ghost mode here as a third computer went down yesterday, and alas, here we are anyway. Let's demonstrably project our discontent in the form of a flood of news. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were exceedingly quiet. The active region is heading for the limb at the right side without having developed complexity or releasing solar flares. The sun was calm in general, but the solar wind at Earth did undergo another fluctuation of both plasma speed and interplanetary magnetic fields. We're experiencing some very minor geomagnetic instability off and on from that variable stream. More is obviously expected as those coronal holes are going to have their solar wind interact with Earth this week. We've also got magnetic connections to these and the seismic watch kicks into higher gear tonight after another six-pointer capped off a four-shock swarm in Indonesia yesterday, followed two blot echoes in the region. Windy.com for your best multi-model weather watches. Top ones today are for the southwest U.S. with Rose's remnants sneaking on shore as snow begins to creep increasingly down across the Canadian border. However, the biggest weather alert today is for Taiwan and the southern Japanese islands. This storm is a beast. It's moving slowly enough to maintain its strength as well until it makes landfall. Let's discuss these up cosmic rays, the ones coming from Earth, the ones many of you are hearing about in the news. We did cover that story last week of the Tau particle bursts upward from Antarctica, and they've now put two of their papers on archive for everyone to see, linked below. We have been focused on dust a lot recently, but usually for cosmological physics purposes. Here we're discovering the potential for its mixing to create biologically relevant compounds for life deep out in space rather than on a planet or a moon. Interesting article out discussing the magnetic activity of our sun, determining that the driving forces are near the shell boundaries inside and their observations both explain why the polar fields are the best forecasting tool for solar cycles and that the next solar cycle should be slightly weaker than the one we've had. Most forecasts put it right around this last one, maybe a little stronger, maybe a little weaker, but that's opposed to a complete dud or a complete fireworks display. Folks, only the third ever inner or perihelion object of our solar system has been found. With a close approach outside Neptune and an orbit so large they're not sure it's a permanent visitor, this is one of the grand proofs that our solar system could have dozens to hundreds of planet and moon-sized objects out there of varying brightness and position in their orbit. Up next, we have two imaginatively encouraging stories and an observationally astounding one. First, we're looking at nearby filaments in the universe, which are all said to be resulting from gravitational collapse and concentration in the mainstream, but we have seen coherence in their magnetic fields, right angles to the electric and magnetic fields of their parent clouds, and now it is discovered that the filament cores are all about the same size. At the end of the day, these are going to be electromagnetic structures. An interesting paper is out about the dynamics of the inner regions of NGC 3256. Short version is they say the missing matter and force is inside that galactic area, whereas modified gravity and MOND require much greater distances. It should be noted that Hall disk effect and other magnetic field activity would also be able to account for those extra motions inside. Last but not least, some of the covert matter is covert no more. While you look at the night sky, please force yourself to think of the black regions between stars as being like this, and our eyes just can't see it. The Lyman Alpha Forest is more like a cosmological jungle, and the entire sky is aglow in hydrogen returns spread around the early universe. This is some of that missing matter that forces their dark matter hand. It's not magical material, just very hard to see. Humans had no idea this was here before yesterday. Third machine down, fourth gear activated. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.